Sounds good. Oh, also, before you answer the question, would you mind reading it so we know which question you're answering? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, I can do that. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay, so what have you been in, been most improving on during this off season so far? Um, I would say during the off season, I, you know, worked on a lot of things. Uh, but I would say that well, one of the big ones was the new coach is starting to play me as a winger. Um, so I, I haven't done that actually since I played in the academy. Um, so it was really a lot of working on crossing, one v one ability. Uh, you know, defensively and offensively. So um, there was a lot of work to be done right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's always it's always a challenge to go into an off season um, without knowing exactly what a new coaching staff will want. So just trying to get as much information out of that um, and trying to relate it to what this season is going to be about for me uh, and the team. Um, uh, next question: How did it feel to score your first MLS goal? Uh, that was, I mean, the best feeling of my life up to date for sure. Um, especially since it was against LAFC. Um, I mean, that's just cherry on top of the cake right there. I mean, it was perfect. Um, I mean, I, the only thing that was missing from it was, you know, I, I couldn't do it in front of the fans. I mean, I know that you guys were watching, but having you guys in the stadium would have been, you know, a completely different experience. Um, but, uh, yeah, to say the least, it was a great feeling, um, and I hope that I can score more this season. Um, are you going to change your number this season? Uh, I don't think I am this season. Uh, possibly in the future. Uh, it's weird because when I did choose my number in the past, um, it was literally like I was 51 with Galaxy 2. Um, and when I changed the first team, they asked me if I wanted to change my number, and I said sure. Um, although I wanted to change it to 15 because that was a number that I had a lot growing up, um, which was actually 51 backwards, but at the time it wasn't available. Um, so I did switch to to 29 uh, just because at the time it was the lowest available number. Uh, but I would be I, I would be open to doing that in the future if if the time was right. Um, but right now I, I I'm not really focused on that. I'd say I'd say my focus more so is is just performing um, when I get the opportunities um, and trying to make the most out of that. So I'm not I guess I guess I would say that a jersey number isn't my isn't my focus right now. Uh, what are some positive changes that you look forward to this season? Uh, you know, I mean, just to say the least, I would say that a new coaching staff is always uh, something to look forward to, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, no matter who it is. Uh, obviously, we've been struggling. Um, so I think positive changes on the coaching staff because I think that these guys absolutely have a plan. Um, they absolutely, I feel like, you know, know what they're doing. And it's just something really positive that you can see in the training so far. Um, so working with those guys and then working, always working with a new locker room full of players and, and guys as hungry as these are, you know, is exciting to look forward to. Um, how did the G2 kids coming up to the first team right now look so far? Uh, they look great. I mean, obviously you can tell just by, by looking at some of the guys and how they're playing. Um, you know, Cuevas does well, Johnny does well, Augie, uh, you know, these guys have, have done well so far. It's always cool because for me, you know, coming from G2 and coming down that path, and uh, I always like uh, working with the with the new G2, you know, G2 guys that come up. Um, and it's cool because they're young and, and a lot of them already show that they can make an impact. So um, it's great. It's great. Uh, it'll be it'll be good to see the the more that they can do against you know MLS opponents, um, and the more games we play, uh, the more I think you'll see them progress. Uh, but I love working with those guys. I think actually it's a really young team this year. Like half the team is is probably under like twenty three or twenty four years old. I'm twenty two and I already feel you know older in this locker room. It's crazy. Um, but no, I'm excited to you know, to keep on working with these, with these kids and these young guys. Uh, do you believe there's a difference between last year's coaching staff and this year's? How do you feel about it? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Um, 
I I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Guillermo and and his coaching staff. I love I loved working with them, and I thought they were you know great people, and and they had their own style, um, in their own way. Um, but it, it, it is a lot different. Uh, I think their approach was more so let's let's hit the grind all the time, um, and we're going to be basically tougher and and uh, and more fit uh, than the other teams. Uh, whereas I feel like this year's coaching staff is more of a work smart type of coaching staff. Uh, there's strategy to everything. There's thinking to everything. Um, it's all about you know being one step ahead of your opponent, but 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 doing it mentally and doing it in a smart way. So um, differences for sure, B- big differences. And I think that you know this year's coaching staff will be will be well suited for the guys that we have. And um, I could already see the the positive outlook from you know in in the games. I think that we possess the ball really well, um, which is a change. Uh, and and I think that you know there's there's a lot of different things that are that are in the works that are going to really produce during the season. So, um, yeah, big differences, uh, and I think in a good way. Um, what do you think so far about the community kit? Oh, I love the community kit. Uh, I've only seen it uh, or worn it, I'd say, the once when we were doing uh, media day. Uh, but, man, this is the – yeah, this is the, the best kit I think I've seen so far since I've been with the Galaxy. Um, it's sick to see the, you know, the OG kits that I, that I watched, you know, growing up as a kid. I mean, they're, they're sick. I mean, even, sorry, even before I was born, but I mean, I've seen these jerseys, you know, for forever, but it's cool to have a nice little, uh, new spin on it too. But these are, these are the best kits that I've, I've seen so far. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited. I hope, I hope we wear those more than the home kits this season because things are awesome. Um, who are some Galaxy players, past or present, who have had a big impact on your career? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Uh, there's been a lot of guys that I'd say that uh, have had a cool, I've had cool relationships with uh, on and off the field. Um, I mean, when I first got there, when I first signed my uh, first Galaxy Two contract, um, I would say that the guys I looked up to and I feel like I had good relationships with actually that would really take the time to talk to me and, 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 you know, see how I was doing and give me tips and stuff like that. I really liked Alan Gordon. Um, I think he was a great guy, um, a great, a great player to learn from, um, in the sense of just purely having a striker's mentality and the right mentality all the time, no matter what your role is on the team. Um, I think that, you know, in a way, actually, uh, <laughs> it doesn't play my position or anything remotely to it, but I, I, I love Dan Kennedy. Um, I think he was a great guy to work with as well. Um, he's a guy that always took time to talk to me and, and talk about the game with me. So uh, those are two guys who are really, who are really in, in my young career, uh, I look up to and, and had a good relationship with. Um, and then later down my career, I think I learned a lot of things from different guys. I mean, from Ibra, I think I learned a lot as well. Uh, I think I learned that, you know, to to be at a certain level, it just takes it's just it takes a lot. You know, I mean, he's when you actually see what he can do on a day to day basis in training, it's pretty unbelievable. Um, so to see him um, and train with him every day was was super valuable for me. Um, and it's it's invaluable because to get that experience, uh, you know, at a young point in your career is pretty incredible. So there's a lot of guys that I can go on and on about, but those, but those are some of the bigger impact guys uh, that I can think of right on the top of my head for for my career so far. Um, how do you feel with this year's team? Um, I feel really good about this year's team. I mean, I think that. Uh, it's a diverse group, and I think it's a it's a largely new group. Uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of young guys. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of new faces in the locker room. Um, but I think that it's everyone who can, you know, work within the game plan that the coaches are presenting, and I think that's going to be the most important thing. Um, I think that obviously something that a lot of people don't, you know, realize is that coaching is such a large part of the game. So if you have a group of guys with you know, good talent, but 
more importantly, is willing to work within the system and do everything they can to, to fight to work within a system. I think that's huge and important. Uh, so to have that this year um, is going to be great. And I think that from what I've seen, all the guys are, are, are ready to do that. Um, so, you know, I think we're, we're bound to have a good season and it's, it's been a while for you guys. So we apologize for that, but I think that, you know, I think things are looking up and, and I think there'll be some good surprises coming up. Uh, let's see. Next question. When you first got called up to the first team, oh, scrolled weird for me. There it is. When you first got called up to the first team, how was your transition from G2? Um, yeah, uh, it was, it's, it's a lot different environment. I would say that throughout the whole process from step to step from Academy to G2 and from the G2, you know, to the first team, um, I would say each step you're just, you, you're just getting out of your comfort zone for the most part. Um, for instance, like, you know, like you get comfortable at the academy level, but when you get called up to G2, you're, you're pushing yourself, you're on a different field, you're in a different locker room environment. So it's it's all about trying to get um, comfortable in a new environment so you can perform. Not complacent, but but more comfortable. Um, so when I transitioned from G2 to the first team, uh, it was it was different because, I mean, playing in the USL is, is playing, you know, against grown men and, and that's sort of a step, but... At the same time, your locker room environment is still younger guys because that's the way the Galaxy's done things uh, with, with the Galaxy 2 project. It's been a young team. Um, so when you go to the first team, it's really being in a, a man's environment, um, being with guys who are, who are really you know, top of the food chain type guys uh, who you would never think would be your, your, your teammates in the first place. You've got you know, Jonah Dos Santos, you've got you know, Zlatan and these type of guys in your locker room. So it's, it's getting used to, you know, being yourself in the locker room and, and, you know, trying to, trying to be the best version of yourself for sure, but being very professional at the same time. Uh, so it's just, it's just another step I'd say in maturity and, uh, and prepping to try to be the best player you can be. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it was, it was, it wasn't that, it wasn't too tough of a transition in the sense that, uh, it's still in the galaxy club. Um, so that's always nice. And I've, I've been at the galaxy now for, um, yeah, I think this is my ninth season total with the club. So in that sense, I'm, I'm lucky to be able to, to climb through the ranks of the club and always, always feel like home. And the, you know, the galaxy has been my home for a long time. Um, what team are you looking forward to playing against this season? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, I would say every year I'm looking forward to play LAFC. Um, and hopefully, yeah, obviously doing it with some fans this year. Um, I'd say LAFC is probably my number one. Um, but I really do love playing Portland and Seattle as well. Uh, I think those are just fun places uh, to go to and play uh, because, you know, their fans get ready. We always have, you know, good fans coming up to those games as well. Uh, so I'm excited about those two games as well. I like the uh, the Pacific games. Uh so I'm looking forward to those. Um, how does it feel to see the Bruins make the Final Four? Uh, yeah, I mean, I love to see UCLA go to the Final Four. Um, I don't know if, if everyone knows this. I think, I think it, some people know. But I, I, I go to UCLA part-time um, and I study economics. Um, so this is my – I applied when I, when, I, when I first signed my Galaxy 2 contract. So I've been going now for about five or so years part-time. Um, so I'm a big UCLA guy. Uh, my two older brothers went to UCLA for pre-med, and they're now in med school. Um, so my family's really big on UCLA, and we haven't seen uh, UCLA basketball be this good in a long, long time. So, or football for that matter. So, but um, super stoked to see them in the final four, and I'm gonna be freaking, I'm gonna be watching you know, intently and <laughs> nervously, but you know, they're going up against Gonzaga too. And that's a scary matchup because they look like they're the truth. So <laughs> we'll see how that game goes. Um, who's the funniest guy in the locker room? Oh man. You know, that's a good question. There's, 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 there's some funny guys, but I would say, huh? Well, I would say before I would say that Joe Carano was the funniest guy. Um, but now, 
There's a lot of funny guys around the locker room. I'd say Denny Acosta is a pretty funny guy. Um, it really depends, though, honestly, on who on who you're talking to. Um, me personally, I think John Klinsman's a funny guy too. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good personalities along, you know, around the locker room. It would be interesting if we could do a poll and see who the funniest guy in the locker room is. But I, I think probably funniest guy in the locker room that I've ever seen probably was Joker. I know he's a funny guy. Um, how was the preseason game against LAFC against their stadium uh, team-wise, if you played? Did it feel weird with the empty stadium in general? 4-5, 4-4 tie right, who scored also, LOL. Um, yeah, uh, it was it was a good game. Uh, we played well in the first half. I mean, it was, it was interesting. We, we really played uh, really good soccer uh, for the first 15 minutes of the game. I mean, they couldn't even barely touch the ball. Uh, went down to zero, um, and then you know had a had a comeback in the second half when the, when we swapped the teams. Um, it was more of a starting group in the sec uh, in the first half, and then the, in the second half it was basically a, it was a complete like eleven v eleven switch up. Um, and I played I think I played fifteen minutes. In, I played the first half and I played fifteen minutes in the second half on the wing. Um, who scored that game? I think Chicha scored that game. Augie scored that game, and Johnny scored that game. Uh, but yeah, it was a good game. It was interesting to play in an empty stadium. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's not something that I want to get used to for sure. Um, but it's a preseason match, which I guess is is a little different as well. But it is. Uh, it is a lot different. Like I said, I can't wait for you guys to be back in the stadiums because it makes the games a whole different environment. Um, playing a regular season game with no fans is is a lot lot worse. So preseason, it's okay, but let's let's hope that doesn't last for long. Um, who do you have the best chemistry with on the team? Um, you know, there's there's a lot of guys that I like playing with. Um, I think one of those guys is Efra. I think I've played with Efra for a long time. Um, I think when he's playing in the midfield, um, it's really nice for me because with him, he's always looking for that final dangerous pass. Um, and he always is, knows when I'm going to be making runs. Um, and I feel like we connect really well. I think we did, you know, I think that first showed on the second team when we scored a lot of goals that year, we would assist each other, um, have a lot of good games. So, uh, yeah, I like playing with Efra a lot. I like playing with Kai, too. Uh, Kai is, well, I've known him now since he's been with G2 and then signed the first team. Um, he's one of my really good friends. Um, and when we played together on G2, uh, I think we always really connected well and always had good chemistry. So I love playing with Kai. Um, but there's a ton of guys that I can go on and on that I have, you know, I feel like good connections with on the field. Um, and I feel like I can work well with pretty much anyone in the lineup. Um, okay, next question. If you had to be a roommate with a teammate for the rest of the season, who would you choose and why? Uh, <laughs> there's some good choices out there. I mean, but like I said, I would probably go with Kai for this too, just because I Kai's a guy that I hang out with on a regular basis. Um, he's become one of my really good friends. He's an easygoing guy. See, I'm pretty loud and and extroverted and and really out there. And Kai's more of like a he's he's a, he's a more of a shy, introverted type guy. Um, so it, it definitely compliments well because I feel like I'm obnoxious and talkative all the time, and he's he sits there and listens. So <laughs> I'd probably I'd probably go with Kai. Um, how was your journey to the LA Galaxy? Um, yeah, uh, I think that it was 2012 uh, that I was playing with Arsenal's Academy. It was a, it was a local local club um, over in the Inland Empire because uh, I'm from Corona. Um, and then there used to be a nine. I, I don't know if anyone remembers the format or, or anyone knows it, but uh, the Academy system used to be nine SoCal clubs, including the Galaxy, Chivas, and Salt Lake were the three MLS teams in the region because I think there was 80 teams uh, country, uh, nationwide, including the MLS teams. Um, so I played for one of the club academies. Um, and I would play against the Galaxy that, that year. And um, towards the end of the season, they asked me to come out. Uh, so I did. 
and uh, I came on trial when Mike Munoz was the was the uh, head coach, and Ante Razov was was the other for the for the U18s. Um, and actually, Greg Vanny at the time was the U14 coach um, b- before he left halfway through that season uh, to Toronto. Um, but yeah, I, I came. I loved it. Uh, the coaches wanted me to stay, so I did. Um, and then from then on, I played, yeah, my whole high school career was played with the Galaxy, the rest of it, um, to where I signed my contract uh, with the Galaxy, uh, with G2, I should say, uh, my senior year of high school. Um, and my senior year of high school was done online with the Galaxy's program uh, because they do a, a program called Connexus. I think it's California Connections Academy. Um, and it's an online program that they do uh, with basically independent athletes, individuals uh, throughout Southern California. Um, and then I signed my G2 contract that year. Three years later, I signed my first team. And then this is my third year with the first team. So. Uh, yeah, that, that's a pretty general overlook on my journey to the galaxy uh, during the galaxy uh, in the basic timeline. Uh, next question: What team from Europe would you play for? Uh, I, I'm not sure. That's that's a tough question. Um, you know, right now, I mean, my focus is on the galaxy. I love I love playing for the galaxy. Um, so that would be my answer for that, honestly. Um, you know, I think the galaxy offers a a nice experience, so uh, that's where my focus is right now. Uh, next question: Kai Kareni came and did a Q and A with us a while back. He said he loved nutmegging you in practice. Would you like to tell your side of the story about who gets nutmeg more in practice? Oh man, oh, yeah. Kai said he nutmegs me in practice. You know what? He's pretty crafty. I gotta say. Uh, but I don't think he does a whole lot of net making me in practice. And if he does, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a lay him out. That's all I can say about that. So, no, nah, Kai, Kai, Kai is skilled, though. I mean, he's just he just can't get past me. That's all, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> um, which players usually fool around in training? Oh, man. Uh, you know, you can't really fool around too hard in training. It used to be Eber though. Eber used to have. He, he's he's the type of guy that always used to try to mess with guys in training. Uh, but now I'd say that Jonah's always a guy. Dos Santos is he's he's always, you know, joking around, uh, having a good time. He's always got a smile on his face, which is really cool. Um, and he's just like an infectious, laughing type of guy to be around. So I would definitely say that Jonah's that type of guy. Um. Do you have any advice for people who want to play at the professional level? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, no, no matter where you're at, um, I would say that to play at the professional level, it takes a lot. Um, it takes a lot of dedication. It takes you know day in and day out work. Um, I think what, what what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, you know every everyone is talented at the professional level. Everyone's on that is almost at, the, at about the same level when they come to the professional level, but it's your, your, you know, desire, uh, to get better. And, and you want to have that mentality on a day to day basis. You can't be complacent with, Oh, well I'm here, but, and that's good enough. Um, no, you always want to be trying to get to the, to the next level and be setting goals for yourself. Um, you know, for me, uh, you know, I'm always looking for the next step. Uh, you know, right now I'm, I'm not a starter, but that's, you know, that's the goal that I want to set for myself. I want to be a consistent starter. And then if that, if I reach that goal, then it's on to the next, it's always on to the next and thinking higher for what you can do for yourself. Um, so I would just say, always make sure that you're not complacent with where you're at. Always trying to be reaching the next level because that's how you get there. Um, so to get to the professional level, set goals for yourself, um, and constantly be in touch with reality on, on where you're at in regards to that goal. Um, but constantly be setting goals for yourself because anything is possible. It's just that, you know, you have to get there step by step. Uh, what was the first moment when you realized you made it? Uh, I don't think I've made it. <laughs> but I think this is in relation to the question before. Um, I always thought uh, playing for G2 that the moment that I felt like would be such a relief to me would be when I signed my first first team contract because I had worked so hard for it. 
Um, but I signed my first team contract, and you know, a week later, after that hype had faded, I I realized that I want so much more for myself. Um, so I still don't think I've made it. I don't think there will be any point in my career where I think I made. It. Well, maybe the day I retire is 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 the day that I can say, well, now I can be satisfied. Now I'm done. Um, so I think until that day, I I don't think I've made it. <laughs> Um, how has coming up through G2 been for your LA Galaxy career? What are the challenges and advantages uh, that fans might not see? Uh, yeah, I, I think this is a great question. I love this question, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, how's coming up through G2? Uh, I think it's good. I think it's good experience. I mean, I've got, I think, o over 100 games with Galaxy 2, and it's professional-level games, um, high-level games. Um, so that really just gets you used to uh, playing at that top level, playing against, you know, professional, you know, men and players. And I think it's huge. Uh, it's a huge step in a, in a, in a great step uh, in between, obviously, youth soccer and the MLS. So uh, that is – I really enjoyed my experience on, on G2, and I, and I value it really highly. Um, what are the challenges and or advantages that fans might not see? Uh, the challenges are honestly is that you're always fighting for, fighting, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, for your job. Um, so I think that the challenge is, is is that it's a mental game. You got to stay strong every day. You got to come in ready to, to challenge and, and and fight with the guys next to you, uh, for a spot. And uh, it is it is difficult. I would say I think everyone. The thing that uh, I always say is that everyone thinks that the professional athlete lifestyle is, is all sunshine and rainbows but and don't get me wrong there are tons of advantages and it is and it is a lot of fun and I wouldn't do anything else over it if, if I wanted uh, but I would say that it also comes with a lot of work and responsibility and a lot of fight uh, on a day-to-day -day basis because you are constantly fighting for your job and nothing uh, in this life is guaranteed so unless you're uh, the, Le the LeBron James of your sport, the, the Messies, I mean, nothing is guaranteed. You're always fighting um, for what you want. Uh, so in that regard, I would say that those are the challenges. Uh, I think I'm going to do I'll, – I'll, I'll do two more questions, guys, because I think i, I got to get going after this to, to start getting ready for the game. Um, but uh, if possible, can you elaborate on Vanny's system? What kind of formation is it? Um, is there a lot of pressing? Uh, yeah, Vanny system. There, there's a lot to it. Uh, to, to to give an overview of Vanny system, um, I would say that it's very uh, purpose oriented. Uh, we play in a four three three, but it shifts depending on uh, types of pressing. The uh, de depending on type, uh, opponents' type of pressing, it's a very flexible system, is what I'd say. Um, but it is very purposeful oriented, uh, attacking oriented. Everything has to have a purpose. Um, in regard uh, to what he does, um, but yeah, it's also it's also you know oriented to to us control, controlling the game. Um, even though it adjusts for for what the opponent does, the moral of the story is that we want to control the game, um, and we want to have everything in place so that every game, no matter who we're playing, we have the ability to win games. Um, but uh, it's a good system. Um, and it's different from what I've seen so far. So, um, it's, it's great. Uh, last question I'll, I'll do, uh, how has your role and responsibility changed from your time under GBS to Vanny? Um, yeah. Uh, so this year I've, I've really only played on the wing as uh, the biggest change um, that I've seen. Uh, obviously last several years with, with, uh, Guillermo and, and even with galaxy two, I, I was playing as a center striker, um, and I and I and I still have that ability, and and obviously the the option for the coach to put me there. But um, so far, Greg has wanted to utilize me as as a um, as a winger, um, and you know it's also judging how how you know the type of minutes he's going to want me to play, uh, you know, and, and everything like that. But it's also you know me going from a, from a younger player on the team to now a in a year because of the locker room and, and that type of thing and, and more experience. I've turned into somewhat of an older guy on the team. 
Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot more responsibility the, the older I get uh, to as part of being a pro. Um, so I think that there is a lot of changes this year um, in regard to coaches, but I think that uh, it's a new challenge for me to become a, a new level of professional. And, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think that's my time, guys. So thank you guys for, for having me on. Thank you, Ethan, um, for coming. I'd love to do more, more stuff like this in the future with you guys as well. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. See you guys later.